10.4 is factoring strategy. This is where we pull everything together. Okay, the very first thing we learned was to always factor the GCF first. Always look for greatest common factor first. If we have two terms, we have some options. We could have the difference, whoops, of squares, we, which would be a squared minus b squared. We could have a sum or difference of cubes. Whoops, want an or there. In that case, we would have something that looked like this, a cubed plus or minus b cubed. Your formulas for these, a plus b, a minus b. For this one, we would have a plus or minus b, a squared minus plus ab plus b squared. With We have three terms. We could have a perfect square trinomial. And which means then we would have something that ended up factoring like this. Or we would be using reverse FOIL or in other words trial and error. If we have four terms, we factor by grouping. Okay, this is our factoring strategy. Everything is going to fall into one of these categories, and it's a matter of recognizing which one they we, or which method we need to use to factor. Let's take a look at example one. We are trying to see which method we would use to factor this. Well, notice that we have a binomial and my exponent here is a two, so that should be a real big hint that I'm probably looking for differences of squares. We do have a negative here, so I can take the square root of the first term, I can take the square root of the last term. So it is a difference of squares, which means I'm going to use my two boxes, plus and one, minus and the other. Square root of the first term, square root of the last term. Double check, make sure nothing else can be factored. In example two, we have a trinomial. So we have three terms. First thing we want to look for is a perfect square trinomial. Well, I can't take the square root of 20, so it's not a perfect square trinomial, which means I'm going to use the reverse FOIL, or in other words, trial and error. My coefficient is 1 here, so that means I can just put my x in. I'm looking at factors of 20 that when I take the difference will give me 1. Well, 4 and 5 comes to mind. We want a negative, so we want our larger factor to be negative, our smaller to be 4. If I want to check my answer, I'm going to FOIL it out to see what I've got. In example 3, 
I have four terms, so I'm going to split it in two. Look for my common factor before, between the first two terms, which looks like in this case would be y, and that would leave me with x plus 2. Look at my second t two terms. Look for my common factor, which looks like a positive 5, and that's going to leave me with x plus 2 also. I really recommend that you take the time to write down this sign here so that you don't forget to put it in your parentheses after you pull out your common factor. So our common factor here is x plus 2. Our left over is the y plus 5. Double check it. Everything looks good and you're done.